What else do I want for this first shot? I want it to be accurate. Is that enough? So we're going to call that in, as part of our accuracy, right? Okay. The other part of that, I want it to be fast. I, so just because I get the gun in my hand, how many times do my, how many of my friends go, oh, I got a gun in my hand super fast, and then I start looking at my sights and figuring it out and, and finishing my trigger press. How many times as an instructor, you usually your instructor, see a student get a gun out super fast and then spend three quarters of a second figuring out the final shooting computation and letting it fly? Well, that, they might have that much time, but would I rather hit him sooner? Yeah, so if this guy goes, oh, okay, wait a minute, I get this way, and he turns and shows us the back of his head, and you go, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can put one shot in him. Is that good? What if instead I know beyond a shadow of a doubt in that two seconds time I could put six in him? More is more better, right? More bullets, more better, okay? So I want that, that first shot to be accurate. I want it to be fast. It has to be both. What's more important? It cannot be either. The only thing worse than a miss is a slow miss. Because then it takes time to recover the gun and get set for another one. Okay? And, and again, a fast miss is not better than a slow miss. I cannot miss fast enough to win a gunfight, but I can hit slow enough to lose one. Let me say that again. I cannot miss fast enough to win a gunfight, but I can hit slow enough to lose one. Oof. So how much fast versus speed? You know, people are like, well, there's a balance of speed and accuracy. Do I want a balance of speed and accuracy? No, I want a whole bucket full of both. I don't want to balance them. I don't want to, well, I give up speed to gain accuracy and I give up accuracy to gain speed. I think that's a losing mindset. We can, we can get ridiculously fast if we see fast enough. So sometimes we say, wait a minute, I want to be careful enough to be accurate and I want to do that at the maximum speed that I can possibly be that careful. Because this is a defensive gunfight. So some of us are speed first shooters. Anybody here know they're a speed first shooter? They want to hear that bang? Kara's like, I need to hear that bang. That's Neil. Neil is an absolute rocket ship. All the fast twitch muscle fibers. Woo! Ricky Bobby, I'm going to get a bang. Uh, who's my accuracy first, folks? They got to get an A plus, right? They got that eight inch circle, but they're really mad if it's not in the middle of the eight inch circle. Right, they get that line break on the A and they're like, oh, dang it. Like, hey, there's no A pluses in a gunfight, friend. You hit the target, yay, full points. But I could have done better. Well, yeah, but you'd have taken more time. You got the A, take the A, win, good job. There's, you, you shoot IDPA, there's no, there's no alpha plus, right? It's alpha, alpha, that's it, okay? That's what we wanna get. So shot one, accurate and fast, cool. How many gunfights will the first shot end the day? Sometimes, I've seen the first shot in the day. If it's fast and accurate, yeah, it can. But is there a good chance I'm gonna have to put more? Okay, so then number three, we put second and beyond. And I want the same characteristics, right? I want those second and beyond to go in the target where I want them, and I want them to go quickly. How quickly? Quick as I can process that I need more. I will say one problem of some defensive gun schools is they teach us to shoot jailbreak splits. You know, uh, uh, and we're shooting this, if, we could, if I could shoot 0 .15, 0 .13 splits, that's, you know, great. If I could shoot 0.19s, something like that. Except for I gotta, I gotta shoot as fast as I can think, and I think in quarter second beats. Now, I think in gun school, we go that fast sometimes. So then that way in the real world, when we back off to a more realistic speed, then we can think and it feels easy. This is not different than your car will go way faster than you're allowed to go. You know, your car might be limited to 150 miles an hour and you may feel like, hey, I drive a Porsche and so I can handle that because it can do that really well. Well, you're not gonna do that, but if you know, if you've ever been to the track and you can do it at 150, then when you're driving on the road at 75 and something goes wrong, you still feel like you've got all day. 
I can handle this. I know how to handle this car at this speed. It's okay. So we, we will go fast, fast. When it comes time for the real gunfighting, we know that, hey, throttle control is life. And understanding I'm going to shoot as fast as I can think, yep, still needs to be shot. Yep, still needs to be shot and keep going. Okay? So shoot two plus. <sighs> Anything else we know we're going to probably have to do? So at some point, we're, and we'll get there in a minute, we're not quite there yet. We're going to have to put the gun away. The last one that we're going to put on here is multiple targets. About a third of all the encounters that we uh, analyze on the channel involve multiple attackers. And so uh, being able to transition the gun and your eyes to a second target and to get multiple hits, that can be in one of a couple of ways. That can be multiple bad guys. That can be multiple different targets. So when you know, we talk about the failure to stop, I, pu I pump a couple in here. The recent active killer in Nashville was wearing a vest. It looks like that vest didn't have any plates or anything in it. But I whack someone and knock them over. Maybe I hit them with a couple of 5.56s. Five, five, we wouldn't, you know, with our handguns, whack them with a couple of nine millimeters. And this is not working. It's not changing their behavior. So I got to transition to a more high value target that's probably not covered. So maybe I got to come up here and put one in the head. <clears throat> or I, maybe I do got a pelvis shot him. Being shot in the pelvis really sucks, by the way. Uh, it hurts like the dickens, and it will put them down, but if they've got a gun, it won't stop them from being able to shoot the gun. So you, you shoot somebody in the pelvis to stop them so that they can't run away from you. And in an active killer event, then again, you keep filling them in. Okay, <clears throat> so multiple targets. And then number five, our last thing here, we're gonna safely holster the gun. We gotta put the gun away safely. This is the most dangerous thing that you do on the range, okay? Uh, like, uh, like Donna said earlier, man, when we are in gun school, where people get hurt in gun school is holstering guns because they do so unsafely and they do so in a manner that points a gun at themselves. Remember rule, rule number one of safe firearms handling? Always keep the firearm pointed in the direction of least consequence. Um, which part of your hand do you hate? How much of your hand would you like to keep today? You'd like to keep all five fingers? Yes? So then how much of this hand should I cover with the muzzle of my firearm? I would suggest none, because then you have no chance of shooting off any part of that. Uh, who here is uh, carrying on their strong side hip? Who's going to run from, uh, from their hip carry today? Okay, so one, we got a couple people running from the hip. What part of your thigh, your tush, your calf, your foot are you most interested in shooting? I'd like a none, please, right? So no, none, thank you very much. Uh, those of the rest of us are carrying up front. Okay, so if you're carrying up front, appendix, again, what part of the inside of your thighs and of um, your, your yeah, meaty bits, your bits and pieces, are you least interested in keeping? I would like all of that. Now, particularly, I think those of us who have a cor correctly built holster, we think, oh, okay, a bullet would go past all those bits, bits and pieces. That's true, but the muzzle blast probably won't. Think, think about the hot gases. And the hot gases will do a number on your bits and pieces too, okay? Uh, let's not do that. And we, we very seldom see, I actually see more safety for people who are carrying up front because they, that tends to be a reminder to people. They tend to protect their junk pretty well. And so they tend not to do as much stuff. Whereas people, for some reason, they're like, ah, it's just my booty, I don't care put their gun away quickly. We don't want that. All right. So listen, those five things, if we can do those five things, guess what we've got in our gunfight? We got a B. I'm down with that. Now, if you can master these five, you got a strong B all day long. Now I could go work on this stuff and jump hay bales and, you know, clear houses and do all kinds of crazy stuff and, 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 you know, shoot at 50 yards and do all the fun things that make me or go faster and high speeder. Okay? And they can be very fun. And I, would I like to get an A in my gunfight? Sure. I'd much rather get an A than a B, but I want to get the B first. If you're a fan of Active Cell Protection Extra, you will love the ASP Unlimited app. It is chock full of everything that you love about ASP Extra and more, including full length, uncut, unedited classes from some of the best instructors in America. And it is also the exclusive home of the video Active Self Protection podcast. Hit the link in the description or download it from your favorite app store today and check it out on iOS, Android, Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, or Android TV today.